pray to Jesus. Mass intention. By Sir Samuel Lobon, thanking God for adding another year to his life. Pray for long life and prosperity. The family of Papa John Sully, praying for the repose of the soul of his late mother, Mary Omeje, who died three years ago. Also for God's the guidance and protection over his entire family. It is my that thanking God for adding another year to our life, to our, the life of our twin sister, Mary Ojo, and also praying for divine favor upon the entire family. And now we must pray for divine one time success in our family examination. Also for the truth of the womb, and also for God's blessing and favor upon the house and the entire family. The family of Sarah and the Savior, we will tell you, taking God to the life of the family of Papa Jonas and Adamu, who today will be blessing their marriage with joy, praying for God's guidance, protection, and favor upon the entire family. With another intention to act in this man, praying that the good Lord here and answer them through Christ our Lord. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs>
mechanic Archbishop of Abuja Diocese, Mons Reverend Ignatius Ayota Gama, we thank you to God, the entire presidency of our forces, for those combining this Mogadishu Cantonment, Mantela Barak, Lundi Barak, and Mubabanada, wish to sincerely welcome you on your pastoral visit to our captaincy. And this is my intention to know that we are so delighted because I believe the last time we had a pastoral visit was over six years ago. And that's why we really feel that we invited you to come and pay us a pastoral visit. You are always ready to welcome us. You are always ready to visit us. You are always ready to be there for us. This is the first time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that you are visiting this chaplaincy since you have duty as the Kali Archbishop of Abuja. We are so delighted to have you. So on behalf of all of us, we welcome you, I welcome you, we are entering the press, the Catholic television, and all who have come to be part of this great celebration. My brothers and sisters, I welcome all our well wishers and those who have been very supportive of the church. So I wish all of us a happy celebration as the bishop, Archbishop ministers to us. We are just once again, we thank you for answering our call. May the Lord continue to guide and direct you. So I continue to lead the flock and trust her under your care. Once again, we thank you and you're welcome. Thank you so much, Father Martin. We'll go for the very warm welcome. I can feel that I am truly welcome. And uh, it is wonderful to be here. I can only say I beg Almighty God to hear the prayers of each and every one of us gathered here today. Amen. So as we came in empty, we shall go out very full of God's blessings. So can you stand and we begin our Holy Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. To prepare ourselves for this Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sin, and let us beg God, our Father, to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
people exalt forever, O oh God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the high priest questioned the apostles, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach this. Here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our Father raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. And they charge the apostles not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer this honor for the name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all therein, saying, to him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped the word of the Lord. Let us arise for the gospel acclamation. gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin. Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, 
cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to hold it in. For the quantity of fish that disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. And so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you were fasting your own belt and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will fasten your belt for you and bring you where you and bring you and bring you where you do not wish to go. This is said to show by what dead he was to glorify God. And after this, he said to him. Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord.
to Jesus. So to you all inside the church <clears throat> and to those who are outside, I say good morning to you all. I can see <laughs> I can see that those to be confirmed are so many. And they are the ones that have filled the church even. That is a positive sign. And those to get the sacrament of marriage are here. And they are very ready. There are nine couples. So I can see your church, your chaplaincy, is a growing chaplaincy, a dynamic chaplaincy, and a lot of good things are happening here. Can you clap for yourselves, please? <clears throat> so I bring you warm Easter greetings. You know, Easter has not gone. You know, Christmas comes and goes very fast, but Easter comes and lingers on for a long time. 50 days after, we shall still be saying Happy, Christmas, uh, Happy Easter. So I say Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter, dear parishioners of Our Lady, Queen of Martyrs, Mogadishu Cantonment, and the other barracks that have come here to join. It is a great pleasure to visit you today. And Father Martin Dogo said it's six years since they had the last pastoral visit. Six years is a long time. But I want to promise you that henceforth, if the Father invites me, I will come every year if you want it. <laughs> yes. And I told you, my job here is to pray, nothing more. I have come to pray with you. I have come also to administer the sacrament of confirmation to 374 candidates. This is quite a lot. And then to nine couples, you can see they are all gorgeously dressed. The women in their flowing, brilliant white, and the men in their corporate dress sitting very prestigiously behind them. So it's a great day. And I thank your chaplain, Father Martin Dogo, who invited me. And when he was inviting, inviting me, he was very enthusiastic. I could see that he really wanted me to visit. And he made sure that this visit takes place. So thank you, Father. And I believe you invited me to come and bless your people. All those who are gathered here, are our people. They belong to the family of God. And you have asked me to come and bless them. You asked me to seek God's protection upon our people, especially the members of your families here in the military service. You know the military service is not a child's play. Sometimes Soldiers are sent on dangerous assignments. Sometimes they are sent to very dangerous areas. We are here to pray for them. And may God hear our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall also pray for those who have had to pay the supreme sacrifice. They made the, the supreme price. They made the sacrifice and gave their life in service of our nation. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. In these challenging times, it is only appropriate that we ask Almighty God to take first place in our lives. Give God the first place in your life. The Italians call it numero uno. Number one in your life should be God. You must trust and obey God and allow him to lead, to lead, to take the lead instead of you thinking that you should lead him or dictate to him. There are some people today who believe that God does not know what he's doing. They believe they can do better than God. So they want to lead God and to even dictate to God what he should do or what he should not do. 
I am telling you we are to follow God, we are to give him number one place, we are to trust him, and we are to obey him. The confirmation taking place here today of members of your chaplaincy will make them soldiers of Christ. They will become soldiers of Christ. And I don't need to explain to you what a soldier does and who a soldier is. You understand very well what a soldier's duty is and the discipline, the integrity, the professionalism required of a soldier. If you don't have all this, you cannot be a soldier. If you don't have discipline, you don't have integrity, and you are not committed to your professional calling as a military personnel, you cannot function. So this is who a soldier is. Those to be confirmed today are called soldiers. Soldiers. Because, not because they are wearing military uniform or they will start wearing military uniform, but because they are expected to, to be rooted in faith to be rooted in faith, to be vibrant in the practice of the faith, and to meticulously ensure the preservation of the doctrines and traditions of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, Church is unique. We have a lot of history, we have a lot of doctrines and traditions. And today when you say yes, you are a soldier, it means you are committed to all this. And you are also telling God you want to observe his commandments even better. You want to promote social order. You want to promote fraternal harmony. And you want to show concretely to everyone that you love your neighbor. That is, you promote the welfare of your neighbor. This is what it means to be a Christian. And as soldiers of Christ, your weapons are not the guns and the bombs that the conventional soldiers use. The soldiers are experts in handling guns, in how to put bomb here and there. That is their duty. But yours is not that sort of bombs and guns. Your weapon is the weapon of prayer. St. Paul calls this the armor of God. And he describes that in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 17, where he says, you must put on the armor of God. You must clothe yourselves with the breastplate of justice. Take up the shield of faith. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. The sword. And that sword is not a physical sword. They are referring to the word of God. That is the sword. That is the sword we are talking about. By the confirmation of this, our brothers and sisters today, they are so to speak moving from the status of non-commissioned officers to commissioned officers. I think there are, there's a difference. For the Adogo, I hope there's a difference between non-commissioned officers and commissioned officers. So today I'm saying to you, as non-commissioned officers, you are now being commissioned as officers in the Lord. So you are no longer just ordinary. You are no longer a recruit. You are no longer a private in the army. You are now officers in the Lord because you, you have been confirmed. You have been consolidated and you are now a special group. In the faith, you are no longer neophytes. Neophytes are those who are born newly, like those who were baptized re recently. We call them neophytes because they are just new. So you are no longer neophytes. You are now officially members, mature members of the church. And the difference should be clear between you and those who are just neophytes. When I was coming in, in the procession, I was given a blessing. When I turned this way to where the other members who are not for confirmation are, when I bless them, they make the sign of the cross. I say, yes, these are really mature Christians. When I turn to those to be confirmed, I make the sign of cross, they are looking at me. And then, <laughs> some are uh, doing like this, you know. So I say, okay, these are still growing Christians. But today they will be confirmed and they will become mature. They will become soldiers of Christ. They will become ambassadors of Christ. They will become serious witnesses of Christ. And this is what is going to happen here today. 
So you are mature and you are full members of the church. You are now to promote the good of the church. You have to protect the interests and welfare of the church. Don't say you are small. No, you have a duty now. You have to defend the values of the church, obey God and the church as soldiers obey military directives with unquestioning obedience. You know, you don't tell a soldier forward march and you say, wait, let me think about it. When you say forward march, he goes. Left, right, he goes. He doesn't say wait. I think the soldiers say obey before confirm. Uh -huh. So, you are soldiers of Christ. Know that these are the attributes of soldiers. They obey without complaint. They obey without excuses. And we call that unquestioning obedience. Unquestioning obedience. So you are now full members of the church and soldiers of Christ. You must attend masses every Sunday. And if you have daily masses being offered and you have the chance, also attend. It's very useful. It builds you up. And if there are feasts of obligation, like uh, feasts, like Feast of St. Joseph today, you can come to Mass and pray and in, ask for the intercession of the, the saints. You must go to confession regularly. You must receive communion often and observe faithfully the Ten Commandments. You must also participate in the sacraments with utmost attention and frequency. The sacraments are a gift. Seven sacraments are a gift. They are meant to build you up, to prepare you for the next life. So make use of this to the best of your ability. You are expected to imitate Jesus. You remember what happened on Holy Thursday? When Jesus gave his body, he took bread and said, this is my body, he took blood, uh, wine and said, this is my blood, and he gave it as Eucharist. His body, he gave us as Eucharist, his entire body. Do you remember also that Jesus knelt down to wash the feet of his disciples? Do you remember that? you remember that? Okay, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples on Holy Thursday. And then on Good Friday, we saw him suffering. And he was treated like a criminal, a crook. And he was brutally beaten up and crucified. But the important thing is that at the end, Jesus still forgave those who crucified him. He forgave them because they didn't know what they were doing. So I'm calling you candidates of confirmation to be like Jesus, to give and give, and then to be able to endure suffering and pain, and even to be able to say, I forgive you, my enemy. If somebody does wrong to you, that as a Christian, the sign of maturity is not to fight back, box him, or get a knife and shoot him or get a gun and shoot him, that is not the sign of maturity. The greatest weapon and the greatest power you have is the power of forgiveness. Tell somebody who has done you so bad, something so bad, I forgive you, I tell you this is the greatest weapon. This is the greatest weapon you can use. The weapon of love, the weapon of forgiveness. After, at the death of Jesus, there was a general disappointment. The disciples were so disappointed because they thought Jesus was going to be the savior and he was going to establish even a political kingdom. So they were terribly shaken. They were disappointed. R listen to Cleopas and his friend on the way to Emmaus. He said, we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. That was their hope. But when Jesus was treated like a criminal and crucified on the cross, they said, ah, ah, we didn't think the savior would be like this. Today's first reading, however, shows how, the, how Peter, who before now was so much afraid, what has been transformed. We see how he has been transformed by the Holy Spirit. He became a brave person and gave witness to the risen Lord. And the other apostles, despite the arrest and beating, they suffered in the hands of the Sanhedrin on account of their newfound faith in Jesus they still remain solidly rooted in their faith. Nothing would take them out of that faith. So I'm telling those to be confirmed. We are confirming 374 of you now. You must remain Christian. You must remain Catholics to the end. Not to be part-time Catholics and not to be 
Catholic here today. Tomorrow you hear there is a powerful preacher in one place. You run there. Tomorrow you hear there is a miracle worker, a prophet that has come and he's doing this. You go there. Then you become a wandering Aramean. You become like a nomadic person. These Fulani people going from place to place looking for grass for their cow. So don't be like that. You are rooted in the Catholic Church and it is the Catholic Church you will grow in and die in. That is what you have promised. And then, you, the, the apostles were very clear when the Sanhedrin ordered them not to preach in the name of Christ again. They were beaten up and all that, but they were so courageous and they were so uncompromising. They said, obedience to God comes before obedience to men. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Their faith and conviction were so strong that they were rejoicing to have had the honor of suffering humiliation for the sake of Jesus Christ. Today we heard of the appearances of Jesus after the resurrection. This was to embolden and empower the disciples. When he questioned Peter three times about Peter's love for him, Jesus wanted to give Peter an, an, another opportunity to reform, to reaffirm his love and his resolve to be an uncompromising worker for Jesus. You remember, Peter denied Jesus how many times? Three times. So, but now Jesus is asking him three times, do you love me? And do you love me? And Peter said, he does. So Jesus was trying to encourage him to remain firm in this way. And then, when the disciples went fishing, when they thought that Jesus had died and gone, they were so discouraged and disappointed, and they would say, let's go back to our normal life. So they went fishing. They were fishermen. So they went fishing, and again, Jesus chose to intervene there. They had caught nothing all night, and they were very sad. Then Jesus appeared to them and asked them to catch fish and then to even eat together with him. So we are saying that when we are alone, we suffer. But when we are with Jesus, everything goes well. The apostles thought Jesus had gone, and that was why they were suffering. They even didn't catch any fish. But when Jesus appeared on the scene, they, said that they saw that everything changed. So you must have Jesus with you, no matter the circumstance of life you are in. Have Jesus with you. Allow him to be with you. He knocks on the door of your heart. If you open the door of your heart, he will enter there and stay with you and dine with you and support you all the way. To those who are becoming frustrated and sad, they are tired because things are just not going well, we say, don't get tired. Believe in Jesus. Remain upbeat. Don't allow all that are happening in the society to send you to depression. Remain upbeat. Don't be apathetical to things that are happening in the society whether it is politics or issue of insecurity, let's not give up. Jesus is still with us. And to the millions of unemployed young people and students, university students, languishing at home due to ASU strike, we are saying you must keep hope alive. Don't give up. We know it is not easy, but we are saying you don't give up. And with Jesus, you can never give up. And Nigerians should never give up. They should never be tired of doing good. Even as we are preparing for elections, we will, be, we will be asked to register and to vote. Please don't say you will not register or not vote. You do register and vote. God will do something new someday. God will do something better for Nigeria. As we celebrate Workers' Day today, also today is the feast of St. Joseph the Worker, we affirm the dignity of labor and ask the Lord to bless the work of our hands. And we urge the government to be more committed to creating job opportunities for the youth who do not have to know influential persons to get jobs. Nowadays, the youth are unemployed, and if there is any work, if you don't know anybody or you don't have plenty of money, you can't get the work. We are saying that should not be so. The government should be guided by merit. 
that only people who merit certain jobs get them, not because they are connected or not because they have plenty of money to bribe their way. We are praying also and hoping that those employed will also be treated well on this Workers' Day and the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. We are begging and praying that they will be treated well that the workers in our country do not have to resort to strikes to push home their demands. Always, you know, there is a strike before something is done. That is quite embarrassing. Government should always sit in meaningful dialogue with the labor unions because repeated strikes, such as by ASU and other labor groups, do a lot of damage to our educational system and even the economy. Every time they strike and strike, the labor union will soon go on strike, the medical uh, personnel will go on strike, the doctors, nurses, and then the educationists. It's not healthy for us. It's not healthy for us. So we must encourage our government to do more and to do better. Some cynical social media commentators say that they are tired of praying. When I ask them, ask people that we must pray, they say, how can we be praying always? We have been praying for so long and nothing has changed. And I'm saying, please, don't stop praying. When you stop praying, things will even get worse. Let us keep praying. I insist that since we are not tired of eating, are you tired of eating food? Are you tired of breathing air? Are you tired of washing your clothes? Why should you be tired of praying? And you do this all the time. As I'm talking to you now, you are breathing. If you say you are tired, then stop breathing, let me see. Or don't eat again. So prayer is the spiritual food for the soul. How can you say you are tired of praying, that nothing is happening? Something is happening. And God's ways are not our ways. We pray for this, God gives us another solution. So let us not stop praying. Prayer is so important. And prayer is what we do, have to do for ourselves and for those in need especially those right now who are suffering in the hands of terrorists in the bush. Do you know that as I'm talking to you, there are people, men and women, even children, I saw their photographs, they're in the hands of ter terrorists in the forest. They were captured during the bomb attack on the train from Abuja to Kaduna. They are there, they are helpless. Let us pray for them. Then don't say prayer does not, does not work. Prayer can work. And prayer can touch the hearts of those terrorists. Maybe before we finish this mass, you may even say, hear them say, oh, we have released them. That is the power of prayer. It can happen. When we pray with faith and hope, we know that God will do it for us. And we are also praying that God will inspire our authorities, our civil authorities, our political authorities, our security authorities to provide all that is required so that we will have proper security in place so that our security agents can fight the crimes that are being committed every day that bring so much pain and agony to families and individuals. Imagine how many families are so terribly sad and depressed because their loved ones are in the bush. These children, these women, and these men, they are all in the bush and they may not come back. So let us pray that God will touch the hearts of the terrorists, touch the hearts of the government, and we can say that these people will be back to us safely. And while I'm telling you about security and so on, I know God is our security, but we must do our part. All of us must become security officers. We must be conscious of security. And when we do our part, God will help us, and we shall have the peace and the security that we need. So my dear people of the military establishment here in Abuja, I'm happy to pray with you, and I'm happy that many good things will happen here. We invoke the Holy Spirit to help us to continue to be resilient. Let us not give up. Let us be resilient. Let us be strong. Let us continue to bear witness to the risen Lord. That is what we have to do. Let us continue to be faithful Christians, committed Christians, and above all, dedicated Catholics. Don't be part-time Catholics. Be full-time Catholics. And Jesus, who reigns, will provide for you. And may we continue to abide in Jesus every day of our life. And Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever, will never abandon us. So I ask the Lord, and 
I ask the intercession of St. Joseph upon you all. Like I told you, those of you who have come here, you will go back with multiple blessings in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. May just to be confirmed, stand up. Just remain where you are. Just stand up. begin with the candidates for confirmation, we interrogate them, and after that they will also profess their faith, and we will join them in doing that, because it is Sunday today. But for now we begin with them. Those candidates for confirmation, I am going to ask you questions and I expect you to answer. Do you reject Satan? And all his works? And all his empty promises? Good. Let's put Satan aside, the devil aside. You say you've rejected him. Reject him forever. And now we will ask you whether you believe in the Trinity. Today is um, Sunday, and normally we profess our faith, not in the devil, but in the Holy Trinity. So I will ask all the members who are in the church and those outside to stand up and let us renew our faith, and uh, let us profess our faith since the choir will not sing the, the creed. Now this question goes to everyone who is baptized. 
Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you? Sacramentally in confirmation? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The other members of the congregation can sit down while those for confirmation will kneel down and we shall pray for them invoking God to pour his Holy Spirit upon them and the various gifts that the Holy Spirit gives the gift of strength and courage the gift of peace the gift many gifts so we shall pray for them and I invite the priest with me on the altar to extend their hands over the candidates and we shall pray that God will shower them with his blessings let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the candidates can stand up and beginning from those at the back, you will come in an orderly manner and line up here as if you are receiving communion. Because of the big numbers, I'm inviting Father Martin Dogo, your chaplain, to help me with the anointing. I have already done the blessing and the prayers. This anointing will be done by him and I. So we need a man and a woman to stay with Father Dogo and a man and a woman to stay with me so that they can act as sponsors on behalf of the other sponsors.
Agatha. Rachel Agatha Catherine Perpetua Perpetua Fate Dorothy Immaculate Agatha Salome Dorothy Atonia Lucy 
Daniela Claire Florence Cecilia Lisa. 
we say congratulations. Let us put our hands together for them. So we shall now celebrate the sacrament of marriage. Those to be wedded, please come forward together with your sponsors.
please come forward. They shall line up in front of the sanctuary. You don't need the page boy. You don't need the page boys. Those to be wedded only, man and woman, with their sponsors. Those who will stand as witnesses, the sponsors of the couple to be, please come forward. Each sponsor is to stand behind the couple to be wedded. Confirmation, now we have the sacrament of matrimony.
So these are brothers and sisters have come here to ask the Lord to seal their marriage union. So we beg God to do it for them. But before then, we need to ask them some questions to know if they are really serious and if they really desire this blessing from God. Dear brothers and sisters, your names I'm sure the priest has. You have come here before the altar and before the people of God. You came freely. Nobody forced you. Without any reservation, you have come to give yourself to each other in marriage. So I ask you, is that so? Did you come here freely, without reservation, without any force, to give yourself to each other in marriage? OK. Yes. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Will you, will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes, yes I, I will. will. I will. Good. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Yes, I will. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hand and this, declare your consent before God and his church. Turn to us on each other, and then, okay, good. So we shall begin with the men. You will make this declaration, declaration of consent. So when I say I, you repeat after me, then you call your name. That is the men now. And I will say, take you, and you repeat, take you, and call the name of your wife. I hope you remember the baptism name of your wife. You remember? Because some have forgotten. They use nicknames. They use nicknames. OK. All right, let us go then. To the men now, attention. I call your name. I, Samuel. Again. I, Samuel. Take you. Take you. Call Josephine. the name of I your Samuel. wife. Samuel. Take you, Josephine, okay? To be my wife. All the men, you have to repeat what I'm saying. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise. I promise. To be true to you. In good times. And in bad. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Good. That is the promise made by the men. So we shall now ask the women to do the same so that it will be balanced. So the women, when I say I, say I, and then you call your name, take you, you say take you, then call the name of your husband, and then follow as I say. Okay, the women, we are going. I call your name. Mm -mm. Call your name first. Don't take your husband yet. Call your name. I call your name. I just think, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. Thank call you. the name of your hus husband now. Thank you, Samuel. Again. Again. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise. I promise. To be true to you. To be true to in you. In good times. In good times. And in bad. And in bad. In sickness. In sickness. And in health. And in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days. All the days. Of my life. Of my life. That is what the men, the women are saying. Can you clap for them? That is very strong. Point. That is a very strong commitment. The men have said it and they have done this. The women have also responded that they are also doing the same and they hope to live for the rest of their lives together in happiness and in the Lord. May God hear your prayer. You have declared your consent before the church 
May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you with his blessing. What God has joined, men must not divide. Mm -hmm. and exchange of rings. You will now bring out your rings and we will bless them. After which you will give to each other. Bring out your rings. Hold it together and lift it up. Hold it. Let her hair. Okay. Okay. Let us bless these rings now. There are only two rings, please. I always see some people having one ring they had before and another one. No. Only one ring for the woman, one ring for the husband, and that is what you will wear. No no, no other rings. set to go. We bless the rings. Just lift them slightly up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like that, yes. And then leave it like that. May the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as the sign of your love and fidelity. Amen. Amen. So sprinkle holy water on them and then we are ready time for the exchange of rings. So I ask the men to take the rings of their wife. Please. Take only that of your wife now. The men. The men. Take the ring of your wife now. And hold her left hand and raise it up a bit. Uh -huh. You are doing it well. There we go. Hmm. No, no. You raise it. Raise it. Raise it. Uh -huh. Yes. Very good. Okay. This is it then. This is the point of no return. When you give yourself totally and she gives herself totally and then you are one. No more turning back. Okay. Let us begin with the main. When you hear me count one, two, three, three, then you call the name of your wife. Okay, one, two, three, you call the name of your wife and then follow what, follow me. Whatever I say, you follow. Okay, let us begin with the men. There, one, two, three. Happiness. Again. Together. Happiness. Take this ring. Take, Take this, this ring. ring. Show it to her. Take this ring. Take this, Take this ring. ring as a sign. As a sign, a sign of my love, of my, of my love, love and, fidelity. and fidelity, and fidelity. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. 
Lord. The women are okay now. Let's see whether they will do the same for their men so that they become husband and wife properly. Okay. There are women. The name of baptism. Okay. And then follow whatever I say. Okay. Are we ready? There are women. Okay. One, two, three. Benjamin. Again. Benjamin. Take this ring. Take this ring. Show it to him. Take this ring. Take this ring. As a sign. As a sign. Of my love. Of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Before you sing, before you sing, we this is actually the end of the sacrament of matrimony that you asked for. Now, before the altar, before us all, and before God, you are husband and wife. Before now, before now, if you were living together, you were just living like that. But today, you are living in the Lord. So, since you are husband and wife, I want you to embrace your husband, embrace your wife right now and show her.
Glory to Jesus. Uh, to the candidates that were newly confirmed, or the newly confirmed candidates, uh, you are giving a candle now. During the prayers of the faithful, as we are responding, you can hear he's already been in tune. Yeah, a humble prayer, mercy on your people, Lord. You raise the candle, then. Then after that one, as they are taking the next prayer, uh, the intention, you bring it down. Then when we sing again, yeah, uh, humble, you raise it up again. Do you understand? Let us rise now for the prayer of the faithful. By doing exactly what the Lord asked them to do, the disciples recorded much success in their fishing endeavor. Let us pray that we may always submit to God's will in all aspects of our lives. Always making themselves available to look after the flock entrusted to their care. Let us pray to the Lord. they may discharge their duties for the promotion of the common good and ensure equitable distribution of the nation's resources. Let us pray to the Lord. farmers, fishermen, and artisans, that God may bless the work of their hands, so that they may experience an increase in the fruit of their labor. Let us pray to the Lord. pray for our local community that we may seek to do the will of God in our ordinary life situations and may truly realize that it is the Lord who grants success to human endeavors. Let us pray to the Lord. pray for the dead, especially those of our parish community and family members, that they may find eternal rest with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. silent for our own private intentions.
we now seek the intercession of the Mother of God as we pray, Hail Mary. God, our Heavenly Father, you are the ruler of our lives and the universe. We humbly beseech you to hear the prayers we have presented to you in faith and to give us the grace of sincere obedience and total submission to your will through Christ our Lord. You can now put off the candles. Uh, glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes. Mamas, just hold on. The, we are starting the liturgy of the Eucharist now. So we'll come for the Eucharistic offering after the post-communion. So mamas, hold on. The choristers should give us the offertory. Then the presentation of the oblater. Okay. The newly wedded couples will go to the entrance of the church and process with the oblater. Uh, sorry, the first two persons here, yeah. first two, there are many wedded couples you hold on, one, two, go to the back, some people, one boy, one, one woman, one man, go to the back. Thank you, Lord. 
friends and relations.
celebration on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us holy, pleasing in your sight, and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lead them up to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. For in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb, one slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastor joy, every land, every people exalt in your grace. And even the heavenly powers to the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are played.
of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church fell throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, with friends, our Pope, Ignatius, our Bishop, our Slave, Mr. Larry, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, his most holy spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heads to eternal life and may, be praised and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Uh, are you singing? Or? <laughs> Sorrows. 
May they be glad that you help them in their work and know that you are with them in their need. May they pray to you in the community of the church and be your witnesses in the world. May they reach old age in the company of their friends and come at last to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And you turn to your neighbor and say, Peace be with you. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, and not the Lord be that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my spirit. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Prayer before Holy Communion. Prayer for help. O oh God, help me to make a good communion. Mary, my dearest mother, pray to Jesus for me. My dear and dear guardian, lead me to the altar of God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Please, this is the time for Holy Communion. And Holy Communion is for practicing Catholics. Please and please, we are begging. If you have not been participating in the Holy Communion, remain where you are and meditate in your heart. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, go, glory to Jesus. Those that are outside, those that are outside, the priest will be coming out. 
to meet you there. So if you are to receive and you are outside, please remain outside. You don't need to come inside. Don't stress yourself. The priest will come and meet you there. Glory to Jesus.
O Sacrament Mussoli, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy. O Sacrament Mussoli, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy. O Sacrament Mussoli, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving. May every moment die. Prayer for Nigeria in distress. O powerful and merciful Father, you are the God of justice, love, and peace. You rule over all the nations of the earth. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you. For you are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deed we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishment we deserve. Lord, we are weighing down, not only by our sanctities, but also by moral, economic, and political problems. Listen to who confidently turn to you, God of infinite goodness, our strength in our adversities, our hurt in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to us, your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the souls of all the faithful departed. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Immaculate heart of Mary. Saint Joseph. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mystery may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord.
Thank you, thank you, I'm honored, thank you. The family of Master Lant of Sapo of Amen, thanking God for adding the year to the age will come first, to be followed by the family of Barisa Samuel Opot. Thanking God also for adding another year to his age. And after that, thirdly, the newly wedded couple, and fourthly, the newly confirmed candidates. So why the two families are coming, the newly wedded couples and those for confirmation should please go and get ready for their Thanksgiving. The family of Paul Amen should start coming forward, please. What a marvelous God, he has done marvelous things for us. What a marvelous God. The family of Amen should start coming forward. Easier to do well, my son, Samuel should get ready. The things that are impossible, go outside and get ready. The cannot buy. They are the things that he has done for me. What my father cannot do, what my mother cannot do, he has done it again and again. Hallelujah. What a 
the game of life. They are the things that they have some for us. Oh. What the father said not to. What the mother said not to. Be a stormy day in heaven. Hallelujah. What am I been a star? He has come and let us be free. What am I been a star? What am I been a star? I am a star. I am a star. I am a star.
Commission officers in the Lord. Our papas, our mamas, very senior officers here present, senior officers present, fellow parishioner. Good afternoon. Sir, I want to thank you so much for finding time out of your busy schedule to be with us here. As you can see, we're really happy. And we are grateful. To be in your presence is something we yearn for. And we hope we always, as you say, be with us every year. Thank you very much, sir. We'll still talk again later. And to everybody coming here for the first time, thank you for coming. I enjoyed the mass very well today. I hope I'll be seeing you every Sunday. Thank you very much. After the final blessing, there will be a good photograph with the Archbishop, first with the newly uh, married wedded couple, and then with the confirmed candidates. Announcement. Uh, our timing for Mass is next Sunday, by, go, by God's grace, 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. have come to the end of our Holy Mass, and I'm happy that uh, it has gone so well. Having this big number for confirmation 
and a great number for wedding, for marriage. It's uh, very, very wonderful. So I say congratulations to you all. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I can feel the energy. The energy both spiritual and physical is present here. Yeah. 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 So I think this is why I have to come very often so as to enjoy this spiritual and physical energy. And um, the various groups here have distinguished themselves very, very much. The choir, the CW, is it CW, Golden? Yes, the Sumuntamata, the Catechist here, I see them all very active, everyone. It's so, so wonderful. And your church is dynamic. Your church is... <laughs> Your church is energetic also. So I appreciate your presence and especially the senior military officers that are here. I'm sure Father Dogo will introduce you to me. I want to know you so that when I'm in trouble, I know who I will call. May the Lord spare us from all troubles anyway. Yes. It's good to have all, all of you worship together, the young and the old, the children and the adults, the private in the army and the senior officers in the army, all of you together. You see, it's one family. In heaven, we are one family. All of us will be together like this. So I hope that um, this spirit will continue. The Bigger ones will encourage the smaller ones. When the big army officers are here to worship with the others, it inspires them, it encourages them. Only on Christmas, uh, Christmas Day, I was telling the, the senior government officials, I said, let them not stay away when we have a function. The ministers, the directors, the permanent secretaries, and all that, I said, when we have a function of prayer like this, let them come. Their presence edifies. Their presence inspires. Their presence strengthens the faith of others. So I'm happy that uh, you are doing that. May God continue to help you. There was one musical instrument that stood out as you were dancing and singing. Is it the kalangu? That one that dum 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 dum. <laughs> so it's a very lovely instrument. Is that a, I don't know whether it's a Yoruba or, or, <laughs> but it's so lovely. Everyone was up and doing. So thank you, and may God bless you, Father Martin and your colleagues. Father Paul, which, uh, Mambila, Mambila. Eh? Father Wada is where? Lungi, Lungi, Mambila, and Mogadishu. They are a fantastic uh, group of people bringing you together like this. It's wonderful. And I, I always tell them that we are one. Our priesthood is one. Everything is one. So that you are in the barracks, in the military establishment, doesn't keep you away from our family. Our family here is the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja. Being located here in Abuja, you are part of our Catholic family. No discrimination. Whether you are from Sokoto or from Ogbomosho or from Ezenwela in Anambra State, you are part of our family. So please, let us always in work in everything that affects us, let us unite together. So once again, thank you for your coming. Thank you for the very many gifts. I see a lot of yams. We shall be eating yams from now until next Easter again. Thank you. Yes. So may God bless the confirmandi, those who are confirmed. May God bless you. Those who have wedded today is a new chapter, a new beginning for you. And I pray the Lord will be with you all the days of your life. Yes. And we now stand and receive the final blessing. You bow your heads and pray. May God 
who by the resurrection of his only begotten son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you, your families, and all your members now and forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank mm -hmm. you.